Where does this Daniel Bryan swerve match with his children at ringside, the specter of retirement hanging over the match? I, by the way, I thought the build sucked. And I've yes, said that agree. all along. I thought it was really bad. But still, because Danielson and Swerve are such great storytellers in the match, in their matches, I thought the way that it ended was really, really perfect. And not that the build is meaningless and you just throw it away. I think that could have enhanced what this match could have been. But what those guys did in the ring together was awesome. And yeah. that is going to be another moment that I remember from the year 2024. Uh, mm -hmm. Danielson winning that match and his kids being in the ring with him after that thing was over. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. The build, I, I didn't like the build, but I think that a lot of that has to do with the, 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 the way that they have presented Brian Danielson as I really don't want the title. Uh, he, they have told you over and over again that he's not, he doesn't really care to become world champion, but now he has that opportunity. So they didn't turn it around. You know, they didn't make him want it. They, he was still up until the very end, very, you know, disgruntledly going into this match to win a title. Uh, mm -hmm. I made that joke. They're going to reverse Montreal. Him. <laughs> they're going to throw the belt the ring, the belt, throw the belt on him and shut the lights and everybody <laughs> exits the building. Uh, you know, for me, he is really uh, like top, top favorite wrestlers as far as wrestler goes, right? Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Brian Danielson. You know, these are guys that are my favorite pro wrestlers. That's not, I'm not saying, you know, Ric Flair isn't the greatest and whoever else you like isn't the greatest. He's one of the greatest. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Danielson, by far one of my favorite people to watch wrestle. Uh, I like him as a human being, and I really never connect on that human level with, with the talent because I watch it just for the talent. Because, listen, uh, Terry Bollet and Hulk Hogan, I separate the two, you know? I don't want to ruin my childhood. I, you know, it's, you know it's, what I mean? It's hard like, to I, do, though, by the way. It is it's very, very hard to do. As we get older, it's harder to do that. I know. I know. I, I do it just to preserve the happiness of my childhood. Because, yeah. you know, once you meet your heroes, they generally will let you down, and you discover it who they are really. But Danielson, I like him. I, I champion this guy. As far as life goes, I want him to be happy and healthy with his beautiful family. So for me, this was such a big moment that match, but the build, there were so many different avenues. They could have gone down with building up Brian Danielson to have one last, you know, shot at the world championship in any mm -hmm. company. Yeah. And they didn't do it, but you know, that, that promo he cut the week prior was, tr uh, that Wednesday was incredible. By the way, my um, you know, Hulu cut yeah. it off, so I did not get to see it. I had to go find it oh, elsewhere. You know, I was in the middle of the ocean. I was on a cruise. <laughs> and I was, uh, somebody sent me a very secret uh, link to see it. So you got to see the whole thing. You didn't have to worry about getting I got to see that and, getting and collision. Off. I got to see. Yeah, I got to see yeah. collision too, but... Um, I, I'm with you though. I think he's he fantastic. is, you know, you know, the thing about him and he can't, he comes in probably during the right time in which more people have access to his library of stuff than anybody. And he had a vast library, the Indies, ROH, WWE, now AEW, like there's just so many things and so many different versions of him as a wrestler. And you got to see him, you know, as a young man in his 20s. And now he's, a, you know, he's a dad with two young kids and married and he's in his 40s. And so you, you really had to, got to see the entire um, perspective of, of Daniel Bryan kind of growing up through wrestling. Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson growing up through wrestling. Yeah. Uh, the, but what is so interesting about him is, is kind of what you said, is he is very human. And when I think about the interviews that I've had the uh, opportunity to do with some really cool talent uh, because of, of Dave, you know, I, I've been able to interview Danielson. I've been able to, to interview Omega a couple times, Jericho, Cody, um, and, and more than that. But those are the ones that kind of pop into my mind who are on top yeah. right now in this era. And Danielson and Omega 
were the most interesting ones because I think they allowed their humanness to come out in those interviews. And it wasn't just about the wrestling. It was about them as human beings. And so that was really cool. And I prefer that Danielson over this current one because this current one is he, he's he's like almost he, he he is being honest, but it's almost like uh, I wanted I, 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 I wanted a, maybe a little bit more pomp and circumstance from him in building up this match. And I'm sure Tony Khan wanted that, too. But he just he just had to, you know, get philosophical about things in some of these interviews. I know some people yeah. think, oh, he's doing it purposely. I can't I don't think so, because it is like anti promotion. It's like the opposite of what you wanted. But at the same time, it's kind of a breath of fresh air that he does speak in that way. If you are the interviewer and you get to discuss these things with him, uh, he's he is one of the you know, one of the best ones, I think, that that we've done. So yeah. I like that part. And what do you think is going to be the future? He he did not sound like uh, he was someone who is going to have this like crazy schedule of title defenses in that post show uh, press conference. I know. Meltzer was trying to get some information out of him through his daughter Dave, during the uh, Dave, <laughs> Dave with a question of the night. You know what? You know, for all the crap that Dave gets, okay, there are moments like this, and you realize what a wholesome human being Dave is. Uh, if you know Dave, you know you know the type of person he is. And that question he asked Birdie was exactly who Dave Meltzer is in real life. Just, uh, just, I, I popped, you know, I was so happy to hear him. I was watching it. My wife had walked in and I was watching it cause I watched it after, um, when she came back home and I was like, oh, I want to watch this. Cause I wanted to see what Danielson was doing. And mm -hmm. she's like, she's like, what a great moment, uh, that Dave asked. And then of course he throws, he's like, what about Japan? You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I yeah, think he's was, trying, he, was he saying, he's trying to get him he, in the G1. <laughs> well, I mean, he was, he was kind of trying to feel out what is his future going to look like? Is he dropping this belt? What is Christian coming in to cash in on Wednesday yeah. and Danielson drops the belt? Or does Danielson expect to be at uh, Russell Dynasty at the Grand Slam in Australia? Does he expect to be on those shows? Because then that gives Dave an idea of maybe, you know, what they're doing business wise. It was it was I, it was a question that was kind of cloaked in business, but also it was a it was a great moment and it was dave's uniqueness of of you know just being a reporter who who understands how to ask questions but yeah. what do you think is going to happen here do you think we're going to see four or five title defenses or do you think we're going to see like a couple and then he kind of you know he kind of takes a, a a while off and and we'll see him again later in 2025 i think that show in tacoma is going to be very telling for russell dream um I was always, un and this is me, I, I cannot remember if someone told me this or I manifested this, but I've always felt that that would maybe be the last show for him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a one-month title reign, eh, you know, I, I would like to see a couple of months at least for him and have a couple of defenses. You obviously... Uh, is he wrestling Darby by any chance? Is that did they? Is that something that, that was that, like in the mix? Isn't that supposed to be the New York match? That's the Grand Slam match, right? Darby gets the, whoever the champion. The Arthur is. Ath match, I think. Okay, so we're gonna get him in Darby. We're obviously gonna get him in Christian. Uh, we can maybe get him in Hanger. Maybe him in Swerve again. There's a number of maybe we'll get four matches, but. Shouldn't you sell the retirement, you know, the 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 final, the full time retirement of Brian Danielson as a big show, rather than it just being a whatever pay per view? You know, do the Sting treatment. Okay, here's my thought, and uh, this is where I'm going to give the build and and maybe Brian and Tony Khan a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, because what they set up is the possibility of every match from here on out being his last match, right? If he goes out and says on Wednesday, I am a fighting world champion and I'm going to defend this title until I lose it. And when I lose this championship, that is when I'm going to retire as a full-time wrestler. So if you have that built up, then That's every great. match from here on out could possibly be his retirement match. And so emotionally, the fans are immediately 
built into what is going to happen. All the near falls. Imagine all the near falls being able to work here. Is Do I expect Danielson to lose to Darby? N not really. I would hope not. Not on that match. Could it happen in Seattle? Maybe. But also you could get this big win in Seattle because that is the moment for his home crowd. Now, can we push it out? Let's push it out through Russell Dynasty. Maybe it's Danielson and Okada in the main event there. Oh, man. And then that would you, be fantastic. Then you push it out to Grand Slam in Australia, whomever they have that. And then you figure out what is the time for him to drop that match and who is he going to drop it to? Does he drop it to Will Ospreay to finish that story that they, they, they told? So... I think the opportunities are endless. And if I think about what I didn't like about this swerve and Danielson storyline, but you kind of push it forward for, um, you know, for, for the rest of the year, I think it does make some sense and it could actually be not only decent business, but also just fantastic stories. You got the mox thing yeah. that is there, right? Hey, I want to defend this title against my boy. Um, and you have, you can have one of those, you know, th those be one of those matches as well. And then you just get to the end until you just build up whomever is going to beat him. And finally they do it. And then people are going to do ugly cries at, at a wrestling show. You know, I, I would, you know, if I'm in a fantasy book, right, which I hate doing, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it a little bit of it. I would, I would say having a having that AEW title especially now that you're trying to stop some of the hemorrhage with viewership and attendance that's happening right um you are now attempting to rebuild the you're in a rebuilding period is a TV deal going to happen yes it's going to happen are you now committing to more pay-per-views a year yeah we already know they're committing to more pay-per-views they've added grand slam as a pay-per-view in in Australia you know so we know that they're growing and they're adding more. I think it is very important how they position that world title now. I get MJF. I get Swerve. I get these guys. Obviously, this is the future of them. But having Danielson hold that title, then maybe Omega holds it again. And then maybe Adam Copeland wins it again. You need a little bit of recognizable characters holding your championship to tell people these are the guys, you know, this guy, he's here now. He was great there then. And he's great now. And he's our champion. I think they got to play with that a little bit. You have Okada with that continental. You have that, the, the international title. Those are your worker titles, but having that world title on a Danielson, uh, I, I don't know. Christian, maybe, I don't know. It depends how you like him. Uh, I think guys like o Omega, uh, Danielson, Adam Copeland, and whoever else, you know, whoever else is a big name that they acquire or have, I would maybe keep it, keep the title on those guys for a little bit, just so you rebuild a little bit. I think Danielson's the guy that could drop it to anybody. I don't mm -hmm. know who it should be. I don't think it should be Darby. I don't want it to be Christian. I don't think that's a good send off <laughs> for him where he gets screwed by Christian at the end. Um, Maybe it's Hangman. Maybe it's Moxley. Maybe I... I don't know, and I'm really curious how they present him tomorrow on TV. Yep, 100%. I think, uh, you know what I always think about around storylines like this? Uh, remember WrestleMania 24? They start doing the tease for Ric Flair's retirement match. And supposedly, yeah. it was Stone Cold Steve Austin who had this idea, very similar to what I just said about Danielson, where uh, the next, I think it's like the next match that Flair would lose would 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 be the end of it. And then they didn't actually do it that way. And like, he didn't really have that many matches, but the Sean match was the retirement match. And that match was, was pretty decent. Um, but I always go back to like Ric Flair and you're like, man, you know, if, if, you, if you do this with anybody and, and you can make it work, it's Flair. Like Flair could figure this thing out, but, they did it like in this weird, funky WWE way. Yeah. Now with Brian Danielson, I think that opportunity is there again. And you can do some really, really fun and creative stuff. Because then when he goes and he does these interviews, he could just say, yeah, you know, 
the next match could be my last. I don't know where I'm going. We'll see. I still have the fire. I anybody could beat me. It's a young man's game. You know that you can have those interviews, and then it's not sort of anti-promotion like I thought these interviews were for this match. So you've kind of built built a little bit there.